Hello, how you doing? DeAndre Smith here. And this lesson is designed to show you how to simplify exponential expressions. I don't want to waste any more time talking, so without further ado, let's go to the board. Hello, the title of this lesson is Simplifying Algebraic Expressions, Simplifying Exponential Expressions. So the overall goal in this lesson is to have you to be able to solve those exponential expressions. And if you don't know what an exponential expression is, okay. Um, as we um, get further along in the video, um, you guys will understand more of what they are and how to simplify them. But in order to become a master in this subject area, uh, we're going to study three parts. The first part is powers and exponents. The second part is negative exponents. And then lastly, we're going to combine all of our efforts together and we're going to simplify expressions in the end. Now let's talk about powers and exponents. Now in powers and exponents, the base is the bottom number and the exponent or the power is the top number. Um, in an exponent, we take our base and we multiply it by how many times the power says. So for example, if we had 2 raised to the 5th power, we're going to take our base 2 and we're going to multiply it by itself 5 times. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 32. Here are some more examples. So if I had 3 to the third power, then that's the same thing as saying 3 times 3 times 3, which is equal to 27. If I had 6 to the second power, that's the same thing as saying 6 times 6, which is 36. And if I had 4 to the third power, that's the same thing as 4 times 4 times 4, which is equal to 64. Exponents also have rules. And those rules are, if you have anything raised to the zero power, it would always give one. So for example, if I had three raised to the zero power, that would equal one. Or if I had x to the zero power, that would equal one. The second rule is that anything raised to the first power is itself. So if I had three raised to the first power, that would equal three. If I had x raised to the first power, then that would equal x. Okay, here are some exponents for us to solve. So first, if we have 5 to the third power, what does that mean? Well, that means that we're going to take the base 5 and we're going to multiply it by itself three times. So this will be 5 times 5 times 5, which is equal to 125. Next, we have 4 to the zero power. Now, that's a rule. If we have anything raised to the zero power, it's always one. So our answer is one. Now here's a tricky one. We have three raised to the third power, and then we have a negative in front of it. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take care of the exponent. So this becomes three times three times three, which is 27. And this negative tells us that we're going to take the opposite of what our answer is. So since our answer is positive 27, we're going to change it into negative 27. So I know you all probably scratching your head right now and saying, well, how come I didn't take negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3? Well, it has everything to do with declaring what your base is. In this problem, our base is 3. If we wanted a negative to be our base, we would write it as negative 3 in parentheses to the third power. This then would give a result of negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, which is equal to negative 27. Now let's talk about negative exponents. So what occurs in negative exponents is that we have some base and we raise it to an exponent power, but in this case, the exponent is now negative. So what we do is we find the positive value, and then after we find a positive value, we find a reciprocal. So let's look at that more in detail. So if I take 2 to the negative fifth, that's the same thing as saying 1 over 2 to the fifth, which is the same thing as... 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, which gives me 1 over 32. Now let's go through a few more examples. Well, if I have 3 raised to the negative 3 power, 
What this means is first I'm going to find 3 to the third power, which is 27, and then I'm going to find a reciprocal, which is 1 over 27. So my answer when we have 3 to the negative third power is 1, 27. If we have 6 to the negative second power, what we're going to first do is find 6 to the second power. So 6 to the second power is 36. So if I find a reciprocal of 36, then that would be 1 over 36. The same with 4 to the negative third power. First I'll find 4 to the third power, which is 64. And then I'm going to take the reciprocal of that. So then now I have 1 over 64. In these examples, I change the base to fractions. So now let's see what happens when you have a fraction as the base. So we have 1 half raised to the negative 2 power, or 1 half raised to the negative second power. So what, first we're going to find 1 half to the second power. Well, 1 half to the second power would be 1 fourth. And since we have the negative, then now we have to find a reciprocal. So now the reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4. So our answer would be 4. The same with 1 fourth raised to the negative third power. So first let's find 1 fourth raised to the third power. Well that would be 1 over 64. So now since I have a negative exponent, I'm going to find the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 1 over 64 is 64. Here are a few for you to try. So first we have 5 to the negative third power. So what this means is first we're going to find 5 to the third power. Well 5 to the third power is 125. So since we have a negative exponent, we'll find the reciprocal of 125. So our answer is now 1 over 125. Uh, if I have 4 to the negative 2 power, or 4 to the negative second power, what this is saying is first I'm going to find 4 to the second power. Since 4 to the second power is 16, now I'm going to find the reciprocal of 16, which is 1 over 16. Okay, and our last problem, we have negative one-third, and we're raising it to the negative second power. So first, let's find one-third to the second power. Well, negative one-third times negative one-third is positive one-ninth. So now I need to find the reciprocal of 1 ninth. Well, the reciprocal of 1 ninth would be 9. So my answer is 9. Now we're going to get into simplifying some exponential um, expressions. Um, some of the concepts that we're going to use in these problems are from multiplying polynomials. So if you are totally lost in some areas, you may want to review that video, Multiplying Polynomials. Um, before doing this section. Um, it will help refresh your memory on some of the things um, that are involved in some of the steps. Let's get to this problem. So our base is negative 2x squared y and all of this is raised to the second power. So since this whole base is raised to the second power what we're going to do is multiply this whole base by itself. If I want to further simplify this, this becomes negative 2. x squared is the same as x times x times y times negative 2 times x times x times y. Well, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And I have 4 x's, so this is x to the fourth power. And I'm left with 2y, so this is y to the second power. So now my expression is simplified. 
Now I have 4r to the negative third times 2r to the second power, or 2r squared. So I'm going to um, rewrite this expression, uh, making my negatives positive. Now that I rewrote it, now I'm going to further expand the notation so that I can simplify. So now at this point, I can factor out some R's. And I'm left with 8 over r. I say I had this problem. Well, as a fraction, what I can do is I can break this up into two separate problems. So I can make this x minus 2, x to the minus 2 power, times 1 over 2x to the fourth. Well, x to the negative second power is the same thing as 1 over x to the second power. So now I can take that amount and multiply it by 1 over 2x to the fourth. If I multiply straight across, then now my answer is 1 over 2x to the sixth. In this problem, I have the base. 3x to the fifth y, and I'm raising it to the second power, and then I'm multiplying it by x to the fourth y to the third. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to expand this exponent. So this becomes 3x to the fifth y times 3x to the fifth y times x to the fourth y to the third. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, and I have 14 x's in total, so this becomes x to the 14th, and I have 5 y's in total, so this is y to the 5th. Hello guys, um, I hope this video was able to help you in some type of way. As always, if you have any additional questions or any additional concerns, um, feel free to contact me. Thank you.